The effects of the global financial crisis continue to be felt worldwide. Unemployment is soaring in developed countries as well as in parts of the developing world. In the Pacific region and Timor-Leste, unemployment re remains a major issue. Urban populations are growing rapidly in cities like Honiara and Port Moresby as rural youth flock to the cities for work. But the jobs are hard to come by and many young now make up a large part of the urban poor. In Timor-Leste, for instance, around 40% of urban youth don't have jobs. And in Papua New Guinea, youth unemployment rates are about three times higher than for the general population. Informal sectors are growing in the Pacific, particularly in the case of Suva. It's, it's growing day by day. You have young people, unemployed young people, who are engaging in, in little things like shining shoes, collecting bottles, selling newspapers, even petty crime. Uh, uh, scrap metal collection is, is big in, in Fiji at the moment and even in parts of the Pacific because of the return they get, they get from that. But I think uh, there needs to be a realisation and an acknowledgement of what young people do in these spaces. There's a lot of uh, emphasis is placed on young people in the mainstream, but there is a, a big disconnect between young people that come out of school towards, to, the next, to the next level. About 17,000 young people leave high school in Fiji every year, only 2,000 get jobs in the formal sector. Mm. Yeah. And by doing livelihoods, obviously, you mean earning money, finding ways to... Yeah, earning yeah. money and finding ways and being creative about the resources they have and the skills that they have, mm. yeah, rather than uh, just sort of going, going with the flow and sort of ticking box in terms of attendance in school. It's like attendance in church. Mm -hmm. yeah. There is no hope for the US or for Europe to actually create any new jobs in the tradable sectors, textiles, food, others. Why? Because it's much less expensive to produce them in the developing world. They, will not, they are not competitive anymore. They will, they, there are almost no shirts produced in Europe and the US. So there is an optimistic situation here. There will be new jobs coming, but there will be a fight where they exactly come to which country, and in part that depends on how uh, good the policies the, countries, the country will have. Particularly in the Pacific Islands and the smaller Pacific Islands, migration and the sending home of remittances has become a critical part of the development strategies of the country and of the livelihood strategies of individual families. So in, in the smaller islands in particular, um, having families where one or two members live abroad and are able to earn uh, money at, at a much more successful way abroad than at home, sending home the remittances. And then the households um, in, in the particular Pacific Islands have this additional source of income. And the important thing about it is that it's cash income for them. So particularly in rural areas um, where people have access to land and are able to grow their own food, mm -hmm. but they have very limited cash earning opportunities. So these remittances fill an important gap there and help families able to invest more in housing, uh, able to pay for health and education expenses, um, and able to, to cover other basic needs like utility bills and, and things like that that do require cash income. There are three aspects of globalization in economic sense. There might be, there is much more in cultural and broader sense. This is the trade, these are capital flows, and these are people flows. And when you look at those three, two of the three are largely really globalized, trade and capital flows. They fairly freely flow across the world with very few restrictions. It's a totally different game when it comes to people. There are severe restrictions. For instance, in, in Tonga, um, before the global financial crisis, remittances were the equivalent of 30% of GDP, 30% of GDP, and in Samoa, 25%. So hugely important flows of money um, helping improve the livelihoods of, of people at home. The education discussion is, is big. I think it's, it's beyond us to, to some extent. And I think in, in developing countries like the Pacific, you know, we, we, we sort of question education. You know, a lot of times we go back and blame whoever brought education to us. But, you know, like some of us are, are sort of, you know, are examples of what education can do. You know, we, we get exposure, but at the same time we can still go back to our own countries and, and contribute and, and develop. But then, you know, what about education for those that are still in our countries? You know? uh, I've always thought about this, the two things. I'm not able to put it, you know, really, really well in English, but in, in the Fijian context, which I, you know, think a lot in. But I think it's like education for, education for knowledge, which is what formal education does to us, and education for understanding, which I think is missing. The critical aspect of education that will sort of transform financial education, for example, 
and add that, that other component that Mikael was talking about. I think once we sort of get a critical element to our education system, then we'll begin to sort of start thinking broadly about these this other critical issues. And I think you know, that will take time. And I'm glad that, for example, OZAID is, is contributing to a lot of uh, development, educational development initiatives in the Pacific. And hopefully, uh, you know, these initiatives will sort of bring and tease these issues out. But I think it's, it's still a long, long way you know, ahead for us. So do you, do you see that there might be a, a lost generation, say, with this, this youth bulge in Fiji <coughs> and the, the, the things the way it is, or just an increased gap, perhaps? I'm optimistic about the situation of young people in, in Fiji and, and the Pacific, but young people are very creative. Yeah, uh, only a few young people work in the paid sector, in paid employment, but a lot of other people work in the informal sector, and I think there's hope in, in that sector. Mm. Uh, young people need you know, incentives. They need they need support to be able to grow that sector, particularly when the formal sector <coughs> isn't isn't growing. Mm, yeah. Mm.